I'm Richie from Waffle TV, sponsored by West Beer, and today I'm joined by comedian Nathaniel Metcalf, and we're talking about his new show, Enthusiast. How are you today? Hi, I'm alright, thank you. Yeah, I've just had a coffee, so I'm, I'm doing very well. <laughs> um, how are you? I'm good, thank you. So you just did your show today? I've just done it. So it's already happened. It was a nice one today. Round out again. It keeps packing out. Um, yeah, and I don't, I don't quite know why people are coming, but uh, I mean, it must have some sort of good word or something. Have the reviews been very good on TV? They've been alright, yeah. I mean, um, I'd say they've been better than most, so I think it's, I think it helps with a free show to have sort of decent reviews. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's the first show I'm very pleased with. So tell us about the show. It's quite a nerdy show, and it's about, um, it's kind of, about the time when I was unemployed and how I got kind of obsessed with lots of kind of silly things that people shouldn't really be obsessed with. So there's lots of stuff in there about Neil Buchanan and uh, through the keyhole and all the things I ended up getting into by far too much time. So like TV shows, things like that? TV shows, kind of old movies and yeah, so it's quite nerdy but it's quite accessible sort of for everyone. It's not really about, you, about that stuff specifically. So when did you decide you wanted to become a comedian? I reckon ever since I was like very little. It's one of those things I used to see people and think, oh I'd like to do it. And I think it was only when I got, I was getting on a bit. I was, I was sort of in my mid-twenties and thinking, oh, I've never done it. So I thought I'd better do it rather than think, oh I probably should have done that. So I kind of set a little bit of a timeline in my head and thought I'll try and do it by the time now. 27, I think, was the, the deadline I gave myself. Who are your comedy inspirations? I don't know. The, um, probably at that time it would have been people like um, Newman and Badil and Vic Reeves and Harry Hill and people. They were people I really liked to, when I was sort of growing up, sort of 18, 19. Um, but the people that kind of got me back into it were all the kind of slightly alternative, Josie Long people, I think, really got me back into it in the sort of mid 2000s and some things, 2003, 2004 sort of time. I used to go and see loads when I was about 18 or 19 and I kind of dropped out of it, it didn't really seem to be the kind of stuff that I was into or like watching. And then this sort of stuff seemed to be happening slightly under the radar and I kind of noticed and that kind of got me back into it I think. So why have you decided to come to the Edinburgh Fringe? I come, I've come every year really since 2007. Uh, I think you have to, it's the only way to get better and it's a great place to be able to gig all day and gig several times a day if you want to or as little. I mean you have to I think. I don't think you, you can get away with it. Because if you're taking it seriously at all I think it's the only place to be. What do you think of the free fringe? Do you think it's changed the fringe in a drastic way? Or? Well I'm, I, I've only ever done free fringe um, and that's because um, I can't imagine why you would come to my show and, and not know who I am. Do you know what I mean? It feels like it's going to cost the same amount of money to go and see someone that you've heard of or you kind of you know than to go and see me. And it, it, it feels like a bit of a no-brainer to me. I just couldn't get my head around um, people coming to see me who have never heard of me. Have you had any trouble with hecklers? Certainly not this run. I, I get very little. I think there's something about maybe my demeanour or something that puts people off. I get far fewer than most and I don't know why that is. <laughs> um, How would you deal with one if, like, if you had a hecklers? I think you just do whatever comes to mind. I think it's just to be calm about it and not be... I think often it's, often it's just someone looking for attention. Often, it's, often people say things that um, you haven't heard yourself. So it's kind of like you hear it as a noise, as a whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and if someone found it funny the first time, it's often a good trick to go, what was that? And if they repeat it, it's very rarely funny the second time. Yeah. In which case, it's someone saying something which no one, no one finds funny. So it's then very easy to respond to. So what's your future plans after this? I don't know. I'm sort of waiting to see where this takes me. Really, I'd quite like to do it elsewhere um, if I can, if anyone wants to put it on somewhere. Mm -hmm. I know I've got plans, I'm definitely doing it in September in London and for a couple of people, but if anyone wants me to keep doing it. And if, I mean I've enjoyed it, that's quite, it's quite nice, it's my first hour. So essentially I'm, I'm probably 
got rid of almost all of my material by doing it, so it's kind of quite exciting to try and put together another one from scratch. <laughs> and you can catch The Enthusiast at Cabaret Volatier, mm -hmm. is that right? And it's up to, right up to the 26th? Yeah, 24th I think it the is. 24th. Um, yeah, 235. Be sure to catch it. This has been Waffle TV.